many coastal geomorphologists uh, believe that coastal evolution and the geomorphological processes that operate at the coast are really determined by what they call high frequency but low magnitude processes. And by that they mean the everyday waves that arrive at the coastline, the flooding and ebbing of the tide on a daily basis. And it's these very high frequency but low magnitude events that are thought to do most of the geomorphological work at the coastline. However, there is a growing minority of coastal geomorphologists who believe that the uh, less frequent but the higher magnitude events like really big storms and tsunami have a really crucial role to play in geomorphological evolution of coastlines. Um, evidence is coming to light that coastlines have been impacted in the past by really big events. Along the Breton coastline here there have been obviously a number of big storms throughout history that have influenced uh, and changed the coastline here. And also, it has been affected by tsunami, we know that. For instance, uh, in 1755, a very large earthquake that ruptured uh, the seafloor offshore Portugal near Lisbon created a huge tsunami, about 10 meters high, that flooded Lisbon, but also then uh, propagated northwards along the European coastline to hit the coast of southwest Britain, southern Ireland, and here in Brittany, with a wave height of about three meters. So these substantial high magnitude but very low frequency events do occur. Now the types of evidence that uh, these geomorphologists have been looking for in the coastal archives include sedimentary deposits um, that indicate high energy conditions, high energy processes in an otherwise, otherwise uh, very quiet, uh, sort of low energy, relatively low energy setting. Now in this area we have quite high energy waves all the time, um, but we've got evidence that even higher energy has occurred in the past. If we look over here at this cliff section, what we have here is um, at the base of this cliff, cliff section is this sandy deposit and in fact that is a dune, that's a dune, uh, dune deposit, it's dune sand blown off the very um, large beach here at Paws Khan, where I'm, uh, where I'm talking to you from. Um, so we've got dune sand underneath, the, underneath uh, the base of the cliff, but as we go up, we are um, presented with this quite thick layer of uh, very coarse material, uh, gravel, shingle, coarse sand, and even seashells are in this layer. Now, obviously this wasn't deposited by the aeolian processes that are responsible for depositing the dune and in fact this in this context is a high energy deposit the dune is relatively low energy the gravel is relatively high energy and because we're quite some distance from the active beach we need to think about what emplaced this deposit um, we can follow it along the coastline it's quite an extensive deposit it goes for about a kilometer kilometer and a half um, and in some places it's overlain again by dune sand. So what in place this deposit? Well, from the seashells embedded in the deposit, we can collect those and take them to the laboratory and send them off for radiocarbon dating because uh, all marine shells are made up of calcium carbonate contain carbon that can be radiocarbon dated um, and the results that have come back from this suggest that this deposit was laid down in the Dark Ages roughly in the 8th century AD so it's not a recent deposit this is quite old well over a thousand years and what it is showing us is that sometime in history uh, during that period this coastline was affected by a, um, a particularly high energy event now, scientists working here in France have uh, published uh, on this deposit to say that they're most likely to have been in place by a storm. But the possibility does um, exist that it may have been an old tsunami, maybe again generated off the, the Lisbon coastline that actually had enough energy to come in here. Indeed, if it was a big storm, um, given, that, given the time period over a thousand years, one might expect to find more 
the, uh, at least at least more uh, a few more deposits than than just the one. So we are looking at probably an exceptional event that occurred just over a thousand years ago. So we need to keep in mind the possibility that coastlines, although they are affected on a daily basis by uh, normal wave activity, fair weather wave activity, and the flooding and ebbing twice daily of the tides, the very rare but high magnitude event will, and, and we know does, have an influence on coastal evolution. And this is something that's been well appreciated in other fields of geomorphology for many years. For example, in fluvial geomorphology, it's well appreciated that it's the big floods in the river valleys that actually does a lot of the geomorphological work that moves boulders and roads away banks um, uh, and demolishes houses as well in some instances. And that the everyday sort of flow of the river really doesn't do very much. And gradually, um, coastal scientists are coming around to, to the same sort of point of view that these high magnitude events are more influential than previously thought.